Good morning, everyone. I am Halil Cicek uh, from University of Delaware. Today, I will present our research on fracture characterization of interfaces between ultra high performance concrete and high performance concrete. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge co authors of our study, who are Professor Yovan Tatar from University of Delaware and Professor David Menti from Lafayette College. Um, Accelerated bridge construction methods have been widely used in bridge construction recently, and one of the most existent way of accelerated bridge construction is to connect precast tag panels using uh, connection grouts. Pre-studies revealed that using UHPC as a connection closure filling material emulated or surpassed the monolithic structure performance of the bridges thanks to UHPC's high strength and high durability. However, uh, site implement implementations indicated that there exist interfacial cracks between UHPC and ampere cast stack panels. These interfacial cracks brought uh, some structural concerns with itself and questions the performance of the connections. So what can be the potential issues with cracking? The primary issue is uh, related to durability due to the exposure of uh, steel reinforcements to de-icing salt and other chemicals there's a potential for steel corrosion, which can result, uh, results, uh, which can affect uh, long-term performance of the connections uh, due to the bridge deterioration. In our literature review, we have found that there are some bond test methods like sludge shear, flexural tests, and tension plus tests measuring the bond strength between UHPC and HPC. But the common ground of these tests are that the failure mode and then the crack road uh, uh, in these tests are uncontrolled. And also uh, these tests are mostly suitable for relative comparison of bond quality. So in our research, we focused on investigating the fracture behavior of UHPC, HPC interfaces, and we tried to illustrate the effect of surface preparation of interface fracture energy and tensile strength. And lastly, the ability of experimentally obtained UHPC, HPC interface tension softening law was evaluated to predict cracking in a full scale connection. Uh, in our uh, experimental program, we ran three experimental program. First, uh, tensile strengths were measured by splitting tensile testing, then fracture properties were estimated by three-point bending fracture tests. And lastly, structural scale tests were carried out at Lafayette College. First, we measured the splitting tensile tests. Uh, for uh, testing, the test uh, was run on a 200 kip hydraulic testing machine. Uh, for testing, uh, both a monolithic, UHP, a monolithic HPC and UHPC HPC interface cubic specimens were fabricated. Uh, two different surface finish and two uh, high grade states were chosen as uh, test variables, while uh, the in surface finish, exposed aggregate finish, and then S gas uh, finish. Uh, conditions investigated in high, for hygric states, saturated surface dry and then dry conditions uh, include. Uh, in order to create the exposure on the uh, interface, uh, we uh, applied uh, an F-type uh, surface starter on the molds. And for the UHPC, HPC specimens fabrication, uh, we first cast uh, single HPC specimens, then we cut the uh, HPC specimens into two halves, placed back to their molds again uh, for their UHPC side casting. On the right side, we see an example of S cast finish and an ex exposed aggregate finish uh, interface conditions. At the end of the test results, the majority of the specimens failed through their interface. For the specimens that failed outside of their interface, these tests were considered as invalid. Uh, it's also worth to mention that we made a correction in tensile strength according to the steel loading bar that we used. Since the width of the steel loading bar is an influential parameter uh, in determination of the tensile strength. As the second stage of the experimental program, the fracture properties were characterized by three-point bending fracture tests. The tests uh, were performed according to ACI 446 Rylam and the Japanese Concrete Institute recommendations. Uh, 
the tests uh, were conducted with a uh, crack mount opening displacement control in a closed loop. For that reason, uh, we introduced a notch at the mid span and uh, a COD gauge was intercepted uh, at the notch. In addition to uh, crack mount opening displacement measurements, we also measured the uh, mid span deflections by placing two LVDTs on each side of the beam, which is shown in our test setup illustration. And at the end of the test, uh, we uh, take the average, uh, we took the average of these two LVDT readings. Lastly, we placed a uh, self weight compensation mechanisms in order to contract the positive moment due to the self weight of the beam. After performing the test, we plotted load versus displacement uh, curves for each specimens. By integrating the load versus displacement curves, we first calculated the work of fracture. By dividing the work of fracture by the effective uh, fracture area above the notch, we calculated the fracture energy for each specimen. For the fracture test, we chose the same uh, test variables. Uh, during specimen fabrication, we made just one difference. Uh, the notch area was not coated with surface retarder uh, to facilitate uh, saw cutting of the notch. Uh, on the right side, we see the failure modes uh, for exposed aggregate finish and then uh, SCAS finish. Uh, it's seen that how the crack initiated uh, above the notch and then propagated along the interface. In short, placement of the notch at the interface ensured interfacial failure mode. As a third part of the experimental program, uh, structural scale uh, experiments were carried out. Uh, for that reason, a, a real size uh, deck uh, was fabricated, and uh, for the connection detail, PENDOT connection detail was used. Uh, the PENDOT connection detail included a trapezoidal shear key with hook reinforcement bar and had an 8 inch connection width. For the grout, a proprietary UHPC used, and for the peer cast tag panel, uh, an HPC having a design compressive strength more than 10 KSI was used. During testing, uh, mid span deflections uh, were tracked and full field strain uh, at the bottom were recorded. So after uh, finishing uh, all the tests, uh, we evaluated the test result in terms of both strength and energy. On that slide, we see the tensile strength progress of uh, monolithic HPC cubes and uh, the other groups. Uh, as we expected, uh, the monolithic HPC cubes resulted in uh, the highest strengths but when we compared uh, the monolithic HPC cubes with, with the uh, surface finish group, uh, there existed more than 50% uh, decrease in tensile strength. Overall, uh, there was no statistically significant difference between different test variables. Uh, when we evaluated the fracture uh, experimental test results, uh, the test results ended up with slight difference. Again, uh, the monolithic HPC beams uh, had the highest, uh, highest loads, uh, but for, uh, as, uh, for uh, exposed aggregate dry and then exposed aggregate saturated surface, uh, dry surface conditions, there existed more than 58% decrease in peak load. Uh, there was no sig uh, significant difference between exposed aggregate finish dry and then saturated surface dry conditions. However, as cast finished specimens exhibited uh, brittle failure or showed no bonding. If you look at the uh, fracture energy results in detail on these slides, on the right side, we see uh, fracture energy val values for HPC and, uh, and uh, for different surface finish groups for different test variables. Uh, we observed that uh, there existed uh, more than 70% uh, decrease in exposed aggregate uh, finish uh, fracture energies uh, when they compared the fracture energy with the monolithic HPC specimens. Uh, 
On the right side, uh, we see the uh, we see how the uh, specimens fail through their interface, and uh, it's it's seen that uh, uh, we observed uh, the mixed failure mode and the crack mainders between UHPC and HPC, and uh, HPC residue was noted on UHPC side and vice versa. For ASCAS specimens, uh, we only uh, just conducted uh, two tests uh, since uh, all the other specimens failed dur during their handling since they're uh, very brittle. On the right side, we see there's a clean separation between UHPC side and an HPC side of the specimens, uh, which explains uh, why the specimens failed such a in a, uh, failed in such a brutal manner and sh or showed no bonding. Uh, after finishing the fracture test, uh, we used the fracture data to obtain the tension softening law for e different interfaces. Uh, quasi brutal materials like concrete uh, exhibits tension softening after they exit. Uh, their tensile strength. For this reason, uh, the tensile behavior of concrete can be separated into two stages. In the first stage, while linear elastic properties are gover governs, uh, after crack initiation, the tension softening properties govern. However, it's not easy to capture that tension softening by direct tensile measurements. For this reason, we develop an inverse an uh, analysis algorithm using the fracture uh, data uh, and we obtained the ten tension softening behavior for uh, different uh, interfaces for different specimens. I will not touch upon the details how we develop the inverse analysis, but on the right side, uh, we look the average result, average tension softening results and we observed, uh, again, no significant difference between exposed aggregate finish and then saturated surface drive conditions. Uh, but when we compared uh, the inverse analysis results with the splitting tensile test results, we observed 24% uh, and then 45% lower strength by inverse analysis than splitting tensile strength for saturated surface dry and then dry conditions, respectively. Inverse analysis could not be applied to SCAS specimens due to high brittleness of the interface. And on this slide, if you look at the structural scale test results, on the right side, uh, we, see, uh, we see the data from our uh, DIC measurements, which shows the evolution of uh, strain uh, in the connect, uh, connection region. At the bottom, uh, we see the uh, load versus displacement uh, response to test, test attack. So on the video, it's seen that the first crack occurs between HPC and UHPC. So the first crack uh, appears at around four kips, which corresponds to a tensile stress of approximately uh, 250 PSI. And it is one, almost one third of the HPC splitting tensile strength. So after performing the uh, real size uh, deck specimens. Uh, we, in order to prove our uh, test results, we created finite element models. Uh, the primary var variable in our finite model uh, was uh, the interface conditions. Uh, for that reason, uh, we created two models. In the first model, uh, we assumed perfect bonding between UHPC and then HPC. But in our second model, we used our tension softening law for our exposed aggregate. 
uh, and uh, we plotted load versus displacement for finite element model and uh, experimental uh, specimen. Uh, the red curve uh, indicates the perfect bonding, then the blue curve indicates the model uh, that we assumed expose aggregate ten tensile uh, softening behaviors. So we found that uh, the first crack appeared uh, at uh, 3.8 kips, which is really uh, in good uh, agreement, uh, the value we, that we found from our experimental test. In terms of crack stiffness, uh, we have a quite significant, significant difference. Uh, we believe that it's due to the, our uh, assumptions that we made. Uh, uh, for example, we assume perfect bo bond between reinforcement and concrete. Uh, now uh, we are currently working on uh, implementing realistic bond slip curves to evaluate uh, their effect on crack stiffness. To summarize, uh, the data uh, indicated that UHPC HPC interfaces are characterized as significant reduction in fracture energy and tensile strength compared to neat HPC, respectively. High grid state of the substrate did not affect tensile strength or fracture energy of UHPC HPC interfaces. And lastly, uh, tension softening glow obtained from uh, fracture test data acutely predict cracking in a structural scale UHPC connection. Before I finish, I'd like to thank our sponsors and thank your uh, kind attention. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Thank you, Ali, for the presentation. And it was an interesting presentation, actually. Thank you for that. Um, so let's see, uh, there is a question here that says uh, the fracture test that was performed measure properties in model. Uh, while the failure in the joint may involve more two fractures. So it's talking about like, the, let me just read it again probably. The fracture test that was performed measured properties in model one, while the failure in the joint may involve model two fracture. So, So, so probably going to get yes. like a difference between model one and two, probably? Yes. Uh, actually, for our research, uh, we just only considered the mode one behavior. We didn't work on mode two behavior. Um, so there is another question that says, how can, you, how can your results be correlated to the durability issues of UHPC? Actually, we, uh, in our research, we considered uh, the durability of the uh, interfaces. For that reason, uh, we developed some inverse algorithm just in order to predict the uh, uh, cracking between UHPC and then HPC. I hope it's the answer of the question. OK, thank you. And uh, so I can ask one question myself here. Yes. And uh, it looks like a cold joint to me, the specimens you have made. And uh, did you care about the roughness the status of the cold joint to be rough and or smooth? Or it was just all of them smooth, actually? So actually, we con considered two different roughnesses. Uh, so one of the most common practice is the exposed aggregate. So we considered uh, expose aggregate surfaces as roughness, as roughened surfaces. Mm -hmm. Just name them differently. All right, very good. Thanks for the presentation and your answers.